Morning. Uh, I'm going to do some silver birches now. I'm going to try and make this a, get this over in one one hit rather than, than two. Uh, based on the Surrey Hills, which I shall just loosely indicate in the background. A bit of foreground going down a hill, two silver birches and a bit of a fence. That will do. And I'm going to use some of this cane wire jelly. I'm sure there are cheaper versions of this in the supermarkets. It, it um, apart from its, its usual use, it, it, it's very good for slowing down the, the drying time of, of the acrylics. So I'll just mix a bit, especially for the skies, I like a bit of a, a blend. And I also like to mix just a touch of alizarin with my blue for, for my skies. So let's just get some paint on, just kill the canvas, it'll, it'll soak in quite a lot because it's uh, unprimed. You can also use a bit of PVA glue, diluted. But I just want to get some paint on the uh, paper, just to seal it. Then we can, can work over it. I'm going to see, I've got some, uh, I've got a bit of a, a pill tube here or something. And I'm going to put some acrylic varnish in with this as well. This is a uh, matte household varnish, which also mixes very well with the uh, with the people, with the uh, KY. It's all acrylic, or at least the KY jelly is water based, so as is acrylic paint. So just get, just get, get all this over here. Or a bit lower down, let's get some red, light red. We're putting a bit of a bit of light red and black. In the uh, the base of this. This will give us a an underpainting that will reflect greens and or will enhance greens hopefully. Any lumps, just get rid of them. Black. Oh, it's coming up here. So we'll have trees going up here, one going up there, one going slightly away. Right. I have a swig of tea. You need quite a few brushes for this so you can keep them in the water while you change colours. Wait for that to dry, which won't be very long. Then we get some get some colour in the uh, sky. Now, plenty of white. This is all under painting. Just putting to sealing the surface of, of the paper. With a sort of an approximate colour, give me an idea to see which way I'm, I'm going to go. And a 
good grey cloud colour is is a lizard with a bit of uh, ultra. Uh, this will, will help the well, with the, the jelly. It will all help the uh, blending. I want a fairly bright picture here. Just a bit of dark cloud. I'll put light cloud or bright above. Put it all over actually. Just work until I get a sort of an idea of of what I I'm, I'm up to. Just waiting for that to dry. When that dries, I can go over it. But we get the light. Right. Right, a bit of a grey back here, a bit of blue. Right, put in a bit of a background now. Same colour as the sky, but nicer of course. Right. Some colour in this background. Just a tint. Okay, clean the brushes. And uh, with my large inch flat, I'm going to uh, put in.
This is a, an acrylic brush and I, I bought them, well, two of them, this one and the half inch one for watercolour painting to give them a straight edge like for things like masts. Anything where I wanted a, uh, a straight edge of roof but if you take nothing else from what I do, just remember soft, work soft, soft edges, blur the edges, like I'm trying to do here, not always successfully, but, but I, I'm painting these, this, these dark to start with and I can put lights over the top of them but it is above all softness. I've said it several times before when you're painting say the horizon of the sea bring the sky into the horizon sorry the sky into the sea and the sea into the sky edge of a building into the sky just I'll put in some uh, some indication of where twigs are going this is all going to get covered up but you need to I'm painting dark to light on this just get the uh, the edge there. That's one, and the other one will slightly subordinate it. So we'll go over. I'll get that one going up here. Off the picture. Nice bit of black and red. I'm getting a surface on the paint. Now these trees are going to end up hopefully very very light but because the acrylic dries so quick you can get your contrast in and still leave some of the black showing or the other painting showing. I've got to do a bit of rigor work on this of course. So a little go. As you go, you, you can build up an impasto, a surface on which to drag. See that? But this one is in front of that, this one here is in front of the one on the right. So I'm going to put the branches, I'm going to paint the background tree first, I think, and then I can superimpose branches coming from the left hand tree over. Oh, looks nice. Put a bit of blue in there. Silver birch. The paint, the paper is quite buckled now. It probably will flatten as it dries. Burn up is a good one to use with uh, with this.
All right, let that go for a minute. Let's have a go at, the, at this uh, foreground. That's, uh, that's nice and dry now. So let's get a, some nice... I'll have to put some paint out. Uh, I think I've got raw sienna out, out there. We're gonna, I'll carry on with the raw sienna. No, I won't. Yeah, I won't care if I can find it. Uh, I'm going to get a big tube. I'm, I'm using these lovely big tubes of uh, System 3 the daily around me because they're, they're, they're in great wadges of uh, paint. You're, you're not so stingy in using it, which is the bane of amateur painters because they don't use enough paint. It used to be said, and probably still is true, that you need to throw away more paint than you put on the board. Yeah, I've got yellow ochre and uh, and um, raw sienna there, doesn't I? I'll use the two. Uh, I want some more burnt sienna out there. And a bit of burnt umber, which I've got somewhere down there. Oops, oh dear. Messy business painting, isn't it? Uh, I've got some burnt umber there somewhere. I'll use a bit of black with it, with a burnt sienna. Right, okay. Um, so I, I'll use uh, I'll use this this brush. It's a Chinese bristle, long hair, about an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. Nice brush for pushing and stippling and all sorts of stuff. So let's get some nice. surface here. Right, let's get some nice light greens. Bit of red in there. Just an impression this, just a quick using colour. Now some really nice light. almost for a base. Right, 
go back to uh, to the trees and then I'll let that bottom dry off a bit we can put a bit of calligraphy into that um, There's a lot of black going in this. the paint off the brush. <coughs> a bit of, bit of white and a bit of ochre. Use a half inch brush. Right, let's do, put some branches into the back here.
try and wiggle now. Bunch of water. Oops. If I remember, I'll put some shadows on those, let's, on the trunks, let's just get some bits of stuff here. That's just neat black. Well, I'm going to have to set up a little, sit back and just watch, I've got to do something there. But I want to just get this bit done here. So let us so, um, Now I've done what I try to avoid, I've done the same there as I've done there. So I'll have to do something with that. Some come in in front of the uh, front of the tree.
Yeah, bit of fun. A few puppies. Just for a bit of fun. And I need to put some stalks on them, so we'll have some nice light green just catching the... Now, it could be a risk, I could ruin it, just, so just remember what it was at this stage. I'm going to do something like that if I remember. It's just to put in a bit of a, bit of a fence.
let's get a bit of first, just a bit of light back in. Right, put a mount around that. Let's move that up the top there. Alright, well there we are. Let's uh, move the camera around. Well, I'll change the focus to automatic so that I can zoom in and just show you what what I've done. That's nice and naff isn't it? Nice red poppies just to offset the the green counter change. Uh, oh I don't think that's too bad for a, for a, a quickie. Right let's go up a tree. I did the foreground as you saw with dark underneath and just painted over it <coughs> and I did it very quickly just very impression I didn't want to do any portraits I want to make it look as easy as I can and there we go Surrey Hills silver birches in the Surrey Hills that'll do me thank you very much for watching bye bye